Well, good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder, and this is BRN AM for Thursday, August 13th, 2020. Today's top stories, preparing a city for a pandemic and reopening the city of Haverty Grace, Maryland. Joining me now to discuss this and more is Shane Grimm. He's Director of City Planning for the city of Haverty Grace, Maryland. Shane, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning. No problem. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, it's great to talk with you. So I, I thought what we do in this first segment, let's talk about the preparations that you and the city uh, uh, to, undertook in order to prepare for the coronavirus. Well, the city was out ahead of the coronavirus and the administration took it very seriously early on. And I give a lot of credit to our director of the administration and deputy director of the administration and really being early and proactive with getting staff set up to be able to work from home and make sure that we all had personal protective uh, equipment so that we were protected while we were in the office. And we made the decision early on to move staff out into their homes and working from home. And that really worked uh, wonderfully. In, in terms of the, and, and I pr certainly appreciate that, and I'm sure the citizens of Haverty Grace appreciate that. In terms of the businesses in Haverty Grace, the associations, all the people, the community, I, I assume that those businesses were shut down as well by order of Governor Hogan, the governor of Maryland. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And, you know, in terms of uh, delivering government services, I mean, you're, you're head of city planning, so that you, you probably handle a lot of issuances around new construction. But in terms of regular day-to-day -day business of the government, whether it's taxation, revenue, um, personnel issues, things like that. How, how seamless has that transfer been from working in, in, uh, in the, business, in the uh, location of government and then working from home? Really at the city here in Henry Grace, it was very seamless. I heard no complaints and I was really pleased with how it worked. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about department planning in a second, but Overall, from city operations, we were able to transfer. And as you can imagine, with a small city, we don't have the resources that a, a larger city or a bigger county has, but we were able to make the adjustments so that uh, people could pay their bills uh, online or uh, call in and, and pay over the phone. So we really did a great job with that. From the Department of Planning's perspective, we were seamless as well with uh, issuance of permits and things like that. The only thing that we were unable to do and a lot of places were unable to do were to have planning commissions or board of appeals meetings. Uh, some places decided to do them Zoom meetings, but uh, we just did not have the capability to be able to do that. And we we really just um, kind of held up for a couple months on those things, but everything else was seamless. Yeah, in, in terms of construction and, and uh, you mentioned the planning meetings kind of being delayed or set aside due, due to the pandemic. Construction, I would assume kind of was halted or, or maybe not. I mean, is that, was that deemed essential? Were people able to continue building uh, office buildings and churches and ed educational facilities? Yes, yeah, so I can give you a good example of that. The city of Harvard Grace is building a new uh, middle high school and that construction continued. Of course, they asked that construction workers wear personal protective devices and try to maintain some type of uh, social distancing but it did get to the point where construction had to be shut down at that site due to uh, uh, someone that did contract the coronavirus and unfortunately ultimately passed away. Oh, but uh, construction did continue at, at various different sites around, around the city and county. Um, the interesting thing, Jeff, is that uh, I would have thought we would have slowed down during the pandemic and people just wouldn't be doing anything. Uh, I quite frankly have, haven't been this busy in my whole career. Uh, it was really kind of crazy how busy we were during that time. So what, what and, and I think what you're describing in terms of being busy, just in generality, mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying that. I don't know if people are being more efficient or, you know, there's the, the crossing of the blending of the line between of demarcation between being home and working remotely and how it kind of blends together. Mm -hmm. um, what, what types of things are you seeing from a city planning perspective? Are you seeing 
uh, outside um, businesses trying to uh, get more permits? I mean, what, what, what is generating a lot of the business that you're seeing? Well, what I was really surprised to see, I can speak personally for myself when the pandemic hit, you know, I decided to take a break on some uh, home improvement projects around my own home just to kind of see where things were heading. Um, but here at work, I was really shocked to see how many people were spending money on home improvements, whether it be decks, uh, just general renovations, additions to their homes. Um, in my opinion, a lot of the contractors out there really kept busy during that time because people were still uh, getting permits and, and paying to have work done around their heads. Yeah, and that's really interesting because what we've seen, I guess, nationally, when you look at some of the surveys is a lot of people have saved money during this time. So they're not out going to restaurants, right? They're not out going to the mall. They're not buying a lot of goods except what they need. Some have been furloughed, but I can kind of say, look at it and hear what you're saying and say, maybe they redirected some of those savings to, as you're saying, home improvement, improving their properties, improving their condos so that if they did want to sell it and, you know, maybe increase their home values. Correct. And I think a lot of those folks that were stuck at home uh, took that opportunity, the ones that were doing the work on their own, and took that opportunity to uh, make those home improvements. Yeah. And, and in terms of, and I want to leave our second segment to opening back up, but was there a sense, um, of, you know, I know with other cities and other towns around, not just Maryland, but around the United States, people were anxious to get out. Here we are four, four and a half, five months into this pandemic. A lot of us are still sequestered. Are you, were you hearing things from the citizens of Haverty Gray saying, you know, we'd like to reopen maybe like uh, our business or we'd like to reopen the gym? Uh, a little bit of frustration there. And then what was the reaction from local city officials to that? Yes, we did hear that. Certainly the business owners wanted to get back open, but really we were bound by Governor Hogan's orders. And then we did open up eventually and specifically the restaurants, the city did a really good job. Uh, our downtown area is a historic downtown and our main street, which is Washington Street, has a lot of restaurants on it. And the city did a good job in allowing those restaurants to move out into the street. So we went to the State Highway Administration and were able to get uh, Jersey barriers to make it safe for the restaurants. And we closed off certain uh, parking areas in, in the street to allow those restaurants to be able to open up, uh, limited opening outside so that they could do business. And that was very, very successful. Yeah, it sounds like it. Shane, I want to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the reopening of Haverty Grace, the city of Haverty Grace. So stay tuned right here on BRM AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. If you were like 58% of Americans, you didn't go to college. Or you did, but never finished. 
Maybe it's the thought of the big intimidating campus. At Independence University, all classes are held online. Maybe it's the thought of being alone in a sea of students. At Independence U, you'll get a personal support team to help you every step of the way. Maybe it's the cost of all those books and supplies. Online means no books to buy. We even give you a new laptop and tablet to keep when you graduate. Maybe your life doesn't fit typical college classes. At Independence U, our online college fits your schedule. Let's meet a few students. Independence University held my hand through the process. Don't be afraid to take the leap because it has changed my life drastically. Just take the first step and you can do it. If I did it, you can do it too. At IU, there's no barriers to your degree. 800-535-9916. Welcome back. We're talking to Shane Grimm, Director of City Planning for the City of Haverty Grace, Maryland. Shane, thank you so much for staying with us this morning. No problem. Thank you, Jeff. So as we went to break, we talked about the reopening. Uh, a lot of great work being done by the, by the, the Council of the City of uh, Haverty Grace, the Governor, uh, Governor Hogan of Maryland to keep people safe. Now we're at this reopening stage. You mentioned putting up Jersey walls to uh, you know, secure uh, areas for restaurateurs to reopen. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Have, have citizens now kind of come out of the quarantine, gone to some of these businesses to keep them open and uh, functioning and thriving? Yes, they have. The great thing about the city of Haverty Grace is we have a significant amount of waterfront and we're really well known for our promenade, which is a boardwalk around the Susquehanna River we're right at the confluence of the Susquehanna and the Chesapeake Bay. And we really draw a lot of people to our town, to the restaurants and shops. So they've been really excited to get open. We have a lot of antique shops. So we really feel like the people are adhering to the requirements for uh, masks and things like that. So the reopening, in my opinion, has really gone smoothly in the city. Yeah, and in terms, I mean, people, you know, here in New York, in the New York area, I mean, we must wear our masks everywhere. Is that the case in, in Haverty Grace and City of Haverty Grace and Maryland in general? Yes, with uh, Governor Hogan's recent orders to wear a mask if it's not possible for you to maintain social distancing, that uh, the mask orders uh, are, are in place. And uh, it seems like people are adhering to that. Uh, specifically here in City Hall, uh, we are required to wear masks when we are not in our offices. Yeah. And in terms of city planning and, and you know, we're not through this coronavirus pandemic. In fact, we this, it seems like we're having a second wave of reinfections or infections and we don't yet have a vaccine. But what are some of the things that if this pandemic had not happened that you were thinking about from a planning perspective in order to grow the city, encourage people to visit? Um, I think that would be really interesting to hear. Sure. In general, the city of Howard Grace is really precluded from expanding too much right now because we're bounded by I-95. And so in order to annex any more properties on the other side of 95, we'd have to be able to serve those properties with water and sewer and we don't have the resources. So that's really something that's 20 or 30 years out. So I'm really looking at redevelopment and especially revitalization downtown. Uh, one of the big things I think you know that all over the country is uh, microbreweries are a, a big deal. We have a lot of microbreweries in Hartford County in the agricultural areas, uh, but we've really been uh, pining for one here in the city of Haverty Grace, and uh, we're almost there with that. Uh, we have one that uh, hopefully will be coming into town soon, but uh, really planning on uh, revitalization of the downtown, and I specifically have been working on updating the city zoning code, which is a, is a bit antiquated and really allowing for more diverse types of uses, uh, mixed use development, and promoting that along our uh, primary uh, corridors coming into town. Are you seeing a lot of, um, you know, Haverty Grace, as you mentioned, is a, is a destination. Are you seeing a lot of hoteliers coming in um, to build hotels, um, you know, Airbnb opportunities? I mean, is that from a commercial point of view, is that something that you're looking um, you know, at the city to encourage? Jeff, that's an excellent point. One of the big problems that we have here in the city of Haverty Grace is we don't have the types of hotels that we need here to support the events that we have. Uh, I forget the exact number, but on a, in a normal year without the pandemic, we have somewhere around 300 different types of events around the city. 
And we are specifically a wedding destination being on the Susquehanna River. There's beautiful views, beautiful wedding venues. And we just don't have the hotel space to be able to support those types of uses. So we've really been angling uh, for a hotel type use or a boutique ho hotel downtown. And we're hopeful that we can get that to happen in, in the coming year. And then how do you encourage, is it, how do you encourage uh, a Marriott or a brand to come to the city of Haverty Grace? Is it through an RFP process that you would open that up? I'm, I'm curious as to how that works. We have an excellent director of economic development, Erica Cuisenberry, and she really is out there pounding the pavement and talking to these different businesses to try to lure them into Haverty Grace. So she is out there um, going to different conferences, of, of course, virtually now, yeah. and really telling these businesses what uh, we have to offer here in town. Yeah, what, what other types of expansion? I mean, you mentioned um, you don't yet have the resources in terms of expanding sewers and, and you know, kind of pushing out, uh, I guess, expanding the, the property of the city. But what other types of endeavors are you looking to, you know, uh, expand into more, more hospitals, healthcare? You mentioned this, the, the building of a middle, I think you said middle school for children. Uh, any, any other types of services or things that the city is trying to provide? Yes, the, the new middle high school is a, just a state of the art, beautiful high school that uh, again, under normal circumstances would be opening uh, in a couple of weeks, yeah. but, but will not be opening. But uh, no, we are looking at uh, expanding our healthcare base. Unfortunately, uh, our hospital downtown here will be moving five miles down the road to Aberdeen. But what we've seen in the healthcare field is that hospitals are kind of going away and they're going to a different model, uh, which is they're calling them freestanding medical facilities, and they really don't provide all the services that an acute care hospital would provide. So that is one of the challenges of the city of Havre Grace right now, is how do we make up for that loss of healthcare in the city? Although I will say, you know, that is only moving five miles down the road, but certainly it'll be a big impact on the city. And that's one of the big things that we're working on right now. And in, in terms of uh, one of the things we're tracking at a national level, we had a, uh, someone on uh, last week, earlier this week, as you say, talking about real estate and people moving out of the big cities. Are you seeing people move out of, the, it's a little early, right? But people moving out of the city of Baltimore and moving to the surrounding uh, counties and other cities and towns in Maryland? Excellent question, Jeff. Yes, we are seeing that. And what I've been hearing is that those folks in the big cities like uh, New York or uh, Baltimore or Philadelphia that uh, are experiencing issues with the coronavirus, there's people that would like to move out to not the country, but move out to a smaller city mm -hmm. that still has a city feel. And we are seeing that. And that is one of my other initiatives, too, is really to promote infill development in our downtown area. We have, uh, I wouldn't say a significant number, but a good number of infill lots that uh, people are starting to buy up and really build new houses. And we're really seeing the home values in Harvard Grace. Um, I don't want to say skyrocket, but they certainly have uh, gone up. We've seen a few houses in town that were recently built that uh, have gone for anywhere from four hundred fifty to $500,000, which is a real big deal for the city of Happy Grace. Yeah, that seems like a lot of money uh, in general, but um, if you're seeing, you know, we've seen people just migrate away from the cities, as you said, and they're looking for maybe a little bit more, I don't know, a sedate lifestyle, but a more, a, a, a different lifestyle, maybe a less fast paced right lifestyle. And they wanna be, have a little bit more space. And, and so these cities and county areas are a lot more attractive, a lot less people, a lot, lot less confining uh, feeling, I think. And I think that, you know, that's a trend that we're certainly going to have to watch. Well, Shane, I want to thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the great success you all had in preparing for the coronavirus and keeping government functioning. And also congratulations on the reopening of the city. It sounds like you guys, uh, you and the council and, and the team there did a wonderful job to do that. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest or someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line and don't forget for all the news in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, and more, check out today's edition of The Morning Pulse. So until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes.
Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.